everyone, Jason here, host of the Bombcast. Excited to be back with you after traveling last week. Allie stepped in and did an incredible job. If you watched Allie last week, drop her a heart, drop her a like, and let her know how awesome she did. Uh, you might be seeing more and more of her on the Bombcast. Today, I'm so excited as we jump into episode 41. We have CEO, keynote speaker, Lonnie Main joining us from Park City, Utah. Lonnie, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, hi everybody. It's uh, great to be with you. Park City, the colors are beautiful and we're supposed to get snow this weekend. So we'll see what happens. Yes, we're the same here. Colorado, colors are changing and we got snow. I'm not ready for snow. Are you kind of ready for it? Do you like winter? I think, yeah, we are. We're ready for it. I, uh, my office is literally right on Main Street here in Park City, Utah. So when the snow is flying and the resorts are open, it's not too uncommon to get people to come up here and we'll go down for lunch and make two or three runs and then come back to work. And, and uh, so I think we're all pretty, pretty excited about it. Ready. Yeah, that's a, that's a good reason. That's good snow. I, always, I feel like the snow needs to stay in the mountains because uh, that's where <laughs> it belongs. It, when it gets into the city, it gets everything kind of messed up. So. Yeah. Well, so excited to have you on with us, Lonnie, today. For everybody that's watching and joining us, welcome. Uh, we're going to spend the next half hour or so talking about creating meaningful moments for your customers, your prospects, the people that you're doing business with. Uh, Lonnie has built his business over the last 30 years, creating these moments and has some incredible insight uh, that he's excited to share with you. So it doesn't matter what industry you're in, what you're doing in your business, these types of uh, pieces of wisdom that you're going to be hearing from Lonnie are applicable across the board. And so the first thing I'm curious, uh, Lonnie, is give us a little bit of context on how you came into understanding the value around creating these meaningful moments for customers. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, we, I was in a meeting this morning, we were talking about that very thing. And we talk about 30 years of experience and, um, and really honing kind of that personalized customer experience, if you will, or creating moments that stood out, which is why we call the company Red Shoes Living is mm -hmm. when you're delivering an experience that stands out above all that stands out like a pair of red shoes. I mean, it's, it's that simple. And so we had uh, always believed that to compete in the open market, we needed to stand out. And a lot of times the game is not actually happening on the field, it's happening off the field. And it's mm -hmm. in the things that you do that are unique and that are personalized. Personalized experiences have become a, a really big thing in the world of customer experience specifically. And so, you know, we always wanted to be different. We wanted to be different from the products that we built to the services that we provided to how we engaged with our own internal teams how we engage with you know, our customers. And so we started asking the question to ourselves, does this stand out? Or you know, uh, the language now is, is it red shoes? Which means, does it stand out? And so that is how we competed. You know, we competed in open market. We won some of the major brands over the years um, by standing out for the positive in everything we did. And we got this reputation of being the group that came in and did things that nobody else was willing to do or nobody else really even thought about. Um, so to add to that, it's a higher standard of performance, if you will, uh, that you have to kind of subscribe to. And then we have a lot of fun along the way with how we deploy it and some of the unique things that we do. So, so I want to dive into that a little bit more and kind of understand what the, these red shoe moments mean. I was first introduced to, to Lonnie. He was speaking at a conference that I was at just a few weeks ago and got to hear his keynote. Uh, and some of the key things that, that I'm curious about, Lonnie, is when you think about creating a red shoe moment for someone, what are some of the things that people need to kind of think about to create a meaningful moment? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if I may use the red shoes framework a little bit, because it'll tie yeah. right into, you know, what I do with video, which is, you know, why we're here. Um, but in red shoes, we have five pillars that we uh, call the framework of red shoes. And the first one is awareness. And you know, I won't go through all, all these in detail, but just to mention awareness says that you're completely aware of every possible opportunity to deliver an experience that stands out. And mm -hmm. so I, you know, I, local Starbucks here in Park City, Utah, I go there every single morning. And when I walk through that front door, the team is very aware that I'm there because they know me. You know, they've gotten to know me well. I'm aware of them. I know each and every one of them. They also know what I do. So they're always trying to, you know, one-up me and create an experience that stands out. So some days it might be, you know, they're communicating with me. Some days they might be writing something on my cup, you know, some little name or some little note like they do. 
And these are those little moments in time that really endear me to that, that local Starbucks and to the people that are there. So awareness is part of that gratitude, being grateful for, you know, the job that you have, the people that you work with, the coffee that I get every morning, grateful for the people and the fact that they know my name, all of that plays into it. Uh, the concept of everybody has a story. And so video is an example for me. The reason I love to use video in communicating with executives and leadership teams is I'm able to actually tell my story with my voice and they can see my body language, you know, and so I'm connecting in a way that email or some of these other things just don't connect. So it's awareness, gratitude, everybody has a story. And then we talk about kindness and respect. You know, if, if I am a kind and respectful leader, that's going to come through as an example through video, or it's going to come through in how I interact with my customers, clients, and or people that I meet on the street. And then the fifth pillar within Red Shoes is putting yourself out there. That's the action. So you actually have to deliver something that is stand out. You know, it, you can't just do the norm or the average anymore, which, and I'll pause there for a minute. In the customer experience world today, if you're executing consistently, that actually is Red Shoes. Mm. So it might not be something that's standing out dramatically, but you're just operating at a level that you're doing exactly what you said you were going to do. And so the expectations are met. That actually can be Red Shoes. But if you want to go next level, and that's what we really talk about, then you have to do something that's not just just consistent execution. It's consistent execution with some wow moments or some red shoes moments, you know, along the way. That makes mm -hmm. sense. It does. And what I, I mean, I think you just, I mean, those five pillars are key. Uh, for anyone that's watching, hopefully you're able to write those down. I'll, I'll have you share them again, just quickly in summary again. But what, what I think about is for every single person that's watching uh, or, or listening, it doesn't really matter what industry you're in whether you're, you're, you're serving the employees that are working at your organization or you're serving the customers uh, that, that are, are using your business, it is your responsibility to differentiate yourself. And ultimately, it is this customer experience that becomes the differentiator. I mean, a lot of people that watch uh, and engage with us on the Bombcast are, are selling real estate or they're selling mortgage or they're selling automotive where the product itself is not the differentiator. It's about the experience that's created around that product. Uh, and ultimately what leads to more engagement is your ability to create a meaningful experience. How, how have you seen people kind of make a shift from just selling a product to going to that place where they're now creating a more meaningful experience? Yeah, and the key word you're using there is meaningful. And it, that meaningful has to be meaningful for the business. You mentioned real estate. I've done a lot of work in real estate in terms of keynotes and working with companies that are in that uh, world and they want to differentiate themselves. Um, it's a very emotional sell in many respects, if you will. And so there's a connection between if it's a real estate agent, you know, and a, and a buyer, et cetera. So meaningful becomes important. So understanding that individual's story as you're connecting with them and working with them and creating some level of trust and intimacy um, can also be important. So it gets harder when you're a bigger organization to, to you know, create these meaningful um, experiences. But the best in class companies from Nike to Starbucks, you know, all the way through are actually really trying to do that. So there's probably a real balance of technology uh, as well as a balance of kind of the, what I would call the human factor coming in to play. And one of the things that I think you might find interesting and for those listening in is when we talk about creating memorable experiences or experiences that stand out, one of the best ways to do that is in a reverse order. And here's an example of that. When you're out to eat, you know, you're out with friends and you're at a restaurant deploying this philosophy of red shoes living, if you will, or standing out, you're actually doing it to the server that's, that's taking care of you. And so where the server is probably trying to stand out in the experience of them taking care of you, and you reverse that and you go the other way, it creates this environment where people can become the best version of themselves on both sides. And mm -hmm. so some of the stories that we get back and talk about personalization is people are tipping maybe a little bit more because the service was so amazing. They're writing a note, you know, on the receipt that says, listen, you know, I dine out quite a bit. You were amazing that stands out, right? That's personalizing the experience. So I like to talk about reversing the red shoes yeah. as a way of practicing, making things more memorable. And then what people do is that creates behavior where you bring it back into your business, right? And now right. you're thinking about, look, you delivered an experience to somebody that was actually supposed to be serving you. You're on the other side of the fence. So now how do you go back into the business and, and do that, you know, for your customers? 
So well, and I think what's great about that, and one of the, the themes that we talk a lot about on the Bombcast, that's just is so important today, is personal branding, right? Yeah. How you are, you're building a brand around yourself, even if you're inside of a big organization. Uh, how you brand yourself is so important today, and by practicing this in the everyday moments and reverse engineering it, you're creating a brand around yourself, right? When you walk in uh, to Starbucks, you have a personal brand, if you will, right? That yeah. that is Lonnie. You're you're wearing your red shoes, which by the way, if you've ever seen Monty present, let us know. I'm curious anybody that's watching. Of course, we'd love your questions as well. We just had a bunch of people join on, so make sure you drop those in. Uh, but anytime uh, I, I've seen you in public, you're wearing red shoes, which yeah. leads me to ask the question, how many pairs of red shoes <laughs> do you actually have? You know, it's funny you say that. I just cleaned out my closet. Um, okay. So I've, I, at one time, I think I had about 20 pair of red okay. shoes and uh, from Converse Chuck Taylors to Nikes to Vans to you name it. But I had an experience happen to me not too long ago where I went to a keynote presentation and it was early in the morning that I was flying in. And so I took the, the Chuck Taylor red Converse shoes and I had a pile of those and I threw them into my bag and I took off, got to the conference. I threw them on at the conference and I had two left footed <laughs> shoes. And of course, trying to be as authentic as I possibly can from the stage, I told the story. So the cameraman, you know, about every 15 minutes would just show my shoes to the audience. Of course, everybody would laugh. Right. Uh, but those shoes become a reminder of everything that we're talking about. To me, it's a reminder of the, the red shoes pillars. It's a reminder of to me, you know, as I'm interacting with you right now, I'm actually using the red shoes framework with you. I'm trying to be aware. I'm trying to be respectful in how I'm listening to you. I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful that you just said more people are joining. You know, it's kind of that attitude of gratitude. Um, you and I before have been able to connect and learn each other's stories. And then I'm putting myself out there by hopefully giving and delivering my best to your audience here mm -hmm. on this bombcast. And that, that's how it works. It works that quick. Um, I just wanted to quickly come back to in terms of uh, meaningful experiences and personalized experiences. Companies, um, there are airline industries today that when you call into them, they already know your name. You know, they've got all the data kind of to support the different trips that you've been on. And, and so you're seeing people that when they're answering the phone, you're going through an automated system, they're capturing the data. By the time they get to you, they're trying to as authentically as they can connect with you in a way that's meaningful, back to your word. And they're asking maybe how, how your trip was or where you're headed. And they're really starting to slow the process down. Mm -hmm. And they're reconnecting in a way that I think is beautiful. And it's exactly what you guys are doing at BombBomb Bomb with video trying yeah. to reintroduce, and I know you have a term for that, but reintroduce the human connection aspect of it. So that's what you're seeing best in class companies do. And I'm talking about from the large companies to the ones that are smaller and competing on a, on a regular basis. So I think it's interesting when you look at the trends that are out there, especially when you think about how you grow your business. And there was such a significant boom over the last several years around inbound marketing and leads and getting email addresses. And it was all about quantity of how much you could get. And as long as you can convert a certain section of those, you're going to be able to grow your business. And the trends are now going the other direction. Uh, some are calling it, you know, account-based marketing. Uh, but this idea that it's now about personalization. It's now about touching people when they need it, not just blasting at them and creating a lot of noise in our our world, and I think it's about creating these experiences. And you know, video plays a key to a key piece to that. I want to hear a little bit about your video journey. Uh, how yeah. and when did you kind of start to to realize that video was a differentiator for you? Yeah. So I, you know, I ran a technology company, a customer experience technology company, where we collected customer feedback uh, via email, via the phone, and we kept asking ourselves, what's the next level of that? And so. We believe that video was the next level. And over in London and in Europe, we were seeing a trend where video was becoming more popular. Clearly on the social you know, stratosphere, video is a big deal. But we thought, how can we incorporate video where if somebody wants to give video feedback, maybe even show the product, you know, and here's, here's a Nike shoe as an example. It's a new shoe and, and I love it. And here's everything I love about it. Or the opposite of that is here's a Nike shoe that's coming apart. Not sure why, but I thought somebody should see that. And we started to deploy video uh, in that realm, and it started to stand out. Not with everybody, because it was cutting edge, believe it or not, within that realm. And then, you know, we had um, businesses, uh, clients of ours in over 100 countries. And so I started using video to communicate across the pond, if you will, um, with not only with my team, but with key executives and clients. And so 
by the time I launched Red Shoes full time, I realized that video was going to be the only way that I could scale and communicate um, with executives on an authentic level. And so I immediately started doing my research and found out about BombBomb and signed up for it right away. And I used video really from day one. Mm -hmm. And the results were phenomenal for me because, uh, you know, you talk about personalization and and connection and authenticity and all these things that kind of come to it. I could do my research on an executive. I could then reach out to that executive via video in a way that was incredibly meaningful. Back in the day, and I'm much older than you, Jason, but back in the day, you know, before we had all these great tools and technology, I was known to stand out by, you know, I might have Inc. Magazine. I've read some type of an article in there. And it made me think of another executive in some conversation maybe the two of us have had. I would rip that page out of the Inc. magazine. I would write a little note to the executive on there. And when I landed and got to a great place, I'd put it in an envelope and I would you know, put the address on it and I would mail it to them. Right. That seems like nobody does that anymore. And even back then, nobody really took the time to do it then. So the executive would get the note, you know, see that I'd written something personally on there. And immediately there was a connection because, mm -hmm. you know, the executive was thinking, look, Lonnie took the time to actually handwrite something here, maybe even circle some things in the article and personally send it to me. Well, that was an experience that stood out. So I had that on my mind and I thought, okay, so what am I going to do now to stand out above all? And what am I going to do to connect? And that's where BombBomb Bomb came into play for me. And the response is I laugh because people, very sophisticated companies, very sophisticated executives, when I send them a video, the first thing usually I get before they address anything that I've tried to talk about with my business is the video. They want to talk about mm -hmm. the video, you know, and tell me more about it, et cetera. So, and I think what's interesting, I think what you, a little bit of what you're speaking to and is that sometimes we look at all of these new shiny objects that are out into the world that have all the wonderful promises of being the silver bullet that's going to solve all of your marketing problems or whatever it might be in your sales organization. But the reality is the strategies haven't changed. Uh, it doesn't matter what new stuff comes on the market. At the end of the day, this idea of connecting with another human being in a meaningful way is how we've been doing this forever. Uh, and so the tactics have changed, but the strategies haven't. And so when you think about video as being this new tactic and this new way to do the same thing you were doing you know, 10, 15 years ago, what I'm curious around is, have you learned anything about the tactics of video that have been helpful to you? I mean, one of the things that a lot of times people ask are, how do I get comfortable on camera or, or knowing what to say? How do you infuse those strategies that you know work so well into maybe a new medium or a new tactic like video? Yeah, so this is a great question. It's the right question. And I've, you know, I've done my own research and studied this. And one of the things that, that we do here at Red Shoes Living is we want to bring forth the um, uh, pure person, the, the real human being. So as an example, I did filming yesterday for a group all day long, and there was part of that they wanted scripted. And I understood why. There were certain things that needed to be said, and they wanted to make sure that was said. But I finally said, look, it is coming across as an inauthentic approach. So I will hit all of those points you want me to hit for this piece that we're doing. But let me do it with my ums and ahs and, you know, and, and, and let people see me thinking on video because it will connect at a level yeah. – that'll be completely different. And so what I've learned to your question is for me and for the product of Red Shoes and how we communicate, we want them to see the whole person. So sometimes I call this the concept of the pre-sell. In my videos, what I will tell people is, look, I'm coming to you raw. You know, this is just me in my office here in Park City. It's snowing here, and but I really wanted to connect with you. And so hopefully, you know, I'm pre-selling the fact that it's not gonna be perfect, you know? And so when they hear me do an um or an ah, or maybe somebody walks by in my office here, by the way, we have dogs in the office are allowed here. So a lot of the people come in and bring their dogs. Once in a while, a dog is barking. And, you know, some people might say, well, that's unprofessional. Well, I actually disagree, at least for the work that I do. I want people to see all that authentic way. So what I've learned is I'm the same way on video today that I am in a meeting, that I am in a one-on-one -on -one luncheon or a dinner with somebody. And so I want people by the time, if they've only seen me on video, by the time they actually meet me, I want them to actually know exactly the same person. So that's something I strive to do. And I've had people comment. I've been on the top of, you know, the ski resort before and use the app 
to send a video. And in the background, I'll just take a minute and say, look, it's, I realize you don't think I'm probably working, but I am, I'm sending you a video and here's where I'm at. And, and, you know, with my clientele, again, executives, primarily there's a connection point to that. You know, they appreciate it. Ah, Park City, I love Park City, et cetera. So that's one way, you know, I've done it. Um, and it's fun too, because I'll, another way I've used it is if I'm sending a video or excuse me, if I'm sending an email that might be a little bit emotionally charged or could be perceived as being so, I will type that email up, pause, send a video, right? Or send a video with the email and say, listen, before you read this, I just want to explain and give you some context as to what I'm actually trying to say in this email. And I've done that multiple times and people come back and say, man, I'm so glad you did that because I did read the email and I was thinking something different, but what you're trying to say, what you did say in the video is, is this, right? So it gives additional context. So it's not misread, if that makes sense. I, lo I lo absolutely love that idea. Everybody that's watching, uh, take note of that because in your business, you know, we were talking about creating meaningful experiences and often that's around uh, happy moments or, or uh, things that are positive, yeah. but there's actually a massive opportunity that you have when the negative does take place, and it will, right? We're all in business. We've all dealt with customers. Uh, we've all had problems that we have to work through. Uh, you can create, a, a, as, as long as you say, a red shoe moment and how you handle something negative. And when you use video, and, and we get these stories too from our bomb bomb users, um, where instead of typing out that email or using all caps or trying to use an emoticon to, to emote what they're feeling, by just sending the video, it, it decompresses the emotional energy. And frankly, the nice thing too is sometimes if you follow it up with a phone call, you're not dealing with the emotions raw on the phone. They've had a chance to watch your video. You got the tracking so you know they saw it. And then you give them a call you know, 45 minutes, an hour later and say, hey, I just wanted to check in. And you get a very different experience with that person than you would if you just picked up the phone and, and interact with them in that moment. And that's memorable. So I think it's important for everyone to remember, it's not you know creating meaningful memories or moments in your organization aren't just around the positives, but negatives are an incredible opportunity. Yeah, and I, just to add to that, and well said, by the way, you know, in contracts, you know, I have to do contracts like a lot of people do. And so if I'm writing a contract and there's a point in the contract that could be misunderstood or it might need additional explanation, it's exactly the same thing for me. I'll send the contract and then I'll send the video with it and just say, hey, by the way, item three, you know, in a statement of work or whatever the case may be, the reason I wrote what I wrote there is based on this. There's the additional context. And again, I've had great results come back from people you know, just saying, thank you so much. I was kind of curious about why that was there, why this was there. That makes a lot of sense. So that's just, you know, another way um, of thinking about something that potentially could be a negative or an ask that might be greater than what they're expecting. I like to explain it before they actually read it. Yeah, you're overcoming their objections before they can have an objection around it, right? right. But this right. is a key selling tactic that uh, is a key way video can help in, in this process. You know, Lonnie, we have about five minutes left or so. Uh, again, everyone that's watching, thank you guys. Uh, drop us a comment. Drop us a question. Uh, if you, you have anything specific for Lonnie and, and about creating these meaningful moments in your business, we'd love to, to address those. Uh, but, but Lonnie, I'm curious, for someone that's beginning to think about getting started or they're looking at their business, you know, we're headed into fourth quarter. Uh, we get, begin thinking about already, you know, 2019 business planning. What's some advice that you would give to everyone to, to begin thinking about how to start including red shoe moments into their organization? Yeah, thanks for the question. So what I would tell you, and this is going to take a little more work potentially, you know, as I describe this, the standard, if you will, is higher. But there, there's so many systems, great systems and automation and, you know, artificial intelligence. You and I were chatting a little bit about that. And it's all incredibly useful. I'm a tech guy. I'm a tech geek. I love to use technology. But when you use technology too far, uh, you start to lose that memorable experience. It becomes like everybody else. So what I like to do is shock people. You know, I still write handwritten notes to people, you know, and I do video. I use video, I would say 90%, maybe a little high, but pretty close to 90% of my engagements. I'm either using BombBomb or I'm using some other video platform that's live potentially where I am talking with people across the pond, you know, and then people are now starting to use that back the other way. The other thing I would say, I'm also cognizant sometimes video can be too much, 
Mm, yes. you know, I, don't, I don't use video every single time I'm communicating with an executive. So I try to be thoughtful and meaningful in that approach. Um, and just one tactical thing I wanted to come back to, and I know we're running short on time. The other thing is the tracking is really interesting. So if you want to stand out, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that does this, but I can see, you know, it might be two weeks after I've sent a video, the video has already been viewed, you know, a number of times, but then all of a sudden it appears as though it's being viewed and played again. There are times when I, in that moment, depending on who it is, I will send another video and say, hey, I was just thinking about you and wanted to check in and see how things are going, whatever the case may be. And a high percent of the time people go, that's the craziest thing. I was just thinking about you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I know you were because I can see that, you know, somebody is doing something with that video. But I would tell you to, to pause, to slow it down a little bit, be, be more thoughtful. Um, and it's a little bit old school, but go back to some of the older ways of connecting with people. And, you know, we live in a world where not everybody wants to get, get on the phone. Not everybody wants to be face to face. But when you can pause and stand out that way, it really becomes memorable, memorable to people and they don't forget it. Hmm. I love that. And I think it's a key thing, too, about everybody, I think, when I have all, so many conversations with our customers and, and as we're out on the road and talking Everybody's looking for ways, as you're talking about, to automate their technology, to automate their processes, to help save them time. Yeah. Um, and, and I get it, right? We do that. We all have, we all, our, our time is precious and there's certain activities uh, that do need to be automated that, that allow us to. But I think sometimes when you automate a process with a customer and you begin to automate a process with a, a human being, you're dehumanizing that relationship. And anyone can do that. And, and the promises of, of it are, are great. And sometimes they can help you scale your business. But the reality is I, I, I do wonder if sometimes we're not conscious of what it's taking away from our businesses versus taking yeah. the five minutes to write three, three cards versus being able to send out a hundred emails. What's going to be more ROI positive in your organization? Um, and, you know, by creating a meaningful moment, you're going to be able to get that. And, and I'm curious, uh, as some people are kind of coming on, I, I, this idea of being ROI positive with uh, activities that might take more time, how do you measure that? Or when you go into an organization and you say, hey, here we're, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do these things and, uh, and this is going to be a little unconventional. It's going to take a little bit more time, uh, but I promise it'll net out. How do you measure that or how do you help them see the ROI positive activity that it is? Yeah, there, and there are ways to measure in terms of it, whether it's employee engagement or it's, you know, NPS scores like you guys do in terms of the customer. But I'll tell you again, a little bit old school, but one of the greatest ways to do it is just through testimonials. Mm -hmm. um, you know, up on my board over here, I've got handwritten notes from people that, have, that are testimonials, you know, and they are kind of coming back and saying, listen, I just want to tell you that this is the impact that the video had on me, or this is the impact in terms of you writing a handwritten note, or crazy as it sounds, answering a phone. You think about how many people you call today, if we're calling people, but nobody answers the phone. So simply just answering the phone, and I've had people, because I answer my phone, you know, and when I answer the phone, they go, my gosh, I can't believe you answered your phone. I said, what do you mean, you called me? You know, and I'm <laughs> not in front of a client, and so we measure it. There is the, you know, there is the qualitative uh, aspect mm -hmm. and then there is the quantitative. And I like to balance both of them out. I talk about substance and style and I think the quantitative gives you the substance. So however you can measure that, I think you should measure that and use those data points to better yourself as well as better the business. But don't run past the qualitative side of it. You know, the, the side that tends to be a little more fuzzy um, because the, the power of the human connection and the human spirit is hard to measure but it is incredibly impactful and powerful. So good. So good. Well, we're here at the bottom of the hour. Thank you, Lonnie, for your time, for your wisdom, uh, sharing this with everyone. Uh, just incredible information. Thank you, everybody that's been watching along, listening along with us today. Um, and yeah, just such a, such a different tone, Lonnie, like than sometimes we've heard uh, at other times on the Bombcast. So I really appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on and uh, all the best to everybody that's listening in. All right. Well, thank you guys. We will see you next week for episode 42. Same place, same time here on Thursdays live on Facebook. Have a great rest of your day. And we'll see you guys later.